Hey class, welcome to module six. This is the professor's lecture, and we are going to talk about the FAR model, which is the Family Adjustment and Adaptation Response Model. So, if you're ready, let's proceed to the next slide. Now, you'll see from this model that it's a lot like the double ABCX model, but it adds a little something to the model overall. Essentially, it adds the pre-crisis adjustment and post-crisis adaptation. So you'll see those under the adjustment phase at the bottom of this diagram, and then to the right, the adaptation phase at the bottom of the diagram. And you'll see that it's essentially like the ABCX and double ABCX model. It's got the A, the B, the C, the crisis, and then the double A, the double B, the double C, but it's also got an additional double A, double B, double C from um, in, in the um, resist, restructuring and consolidation phases. So I don't know if you can see those, but to the, to the right of the diagram, uh, you've got the restructuring phase and the adaptation phase, the restructuring part of the adaptation phase, or accommodation level one. And then under accommodation level two, you've got the consolidation phase. This explores a little bit in more depth the individual or psychological processes that go through this, that go into uh, family adjustment. But it also looks at intrafamilial, what goes on inside the family, and it explores some community variables as well. So you can see that as we proceed through this course, these models build on each other. In this model, families go through cycles of adjustment, crisis, and then adaptation. But the process, it's important to understand, although the diagram is kind of laid out in a linear fashion, it's not necessarily linear because families may get stuck in one of these phases or even return to an earlier phase. And so there's a cyclical nature to it, although the diagram doesn't lend itself to it well. So if you look to the left, you've got the adjustment phase. At the top, you have a, a large arrow that goes across, that's time. And then you've also got another arrow underneath that that's sociocultural, situational, and developmental stressors that are kind of going through time as well. In the adjustment phase, you've got the um, stressor, the demands on the family. This is something new to this model. And you've got the resources, the definition, and adjustment. The adjustment may be, as you can see from the diagram, bond adjustment or healthy adjustment, positive adjustment, or maladjustment that's not so well done. Then you've got the crisis. In the double A, you've got the pile up. You've got the double B, resources and support. Um, and you can see how the family uh, restructures itself to adjust to this. It's got a shared definition, a search for agreement on solutions and implementation, and adaptive coping. But then you've got if you know they fail to adjust and accommodate to the crisis at level one, then they move into a new crisis, a new pileup in level two, which requires additional or different resources and support. Um, you've got sh uh, again shared family life orientation and meaning. You've got agreement on the changes that need to be made and how to implement those, and then you've got adaptive coping. If the family accommodates that. They either move to bond adaptation, or if they fail to consolidate these changes, they move to maladaptation. And that's the degree in this model of member to, member to family fit and the fit of the family to the community. Okay, enough on this. Let's delve into this model a little bit more by moving to the next slide. In this slide, <coughs> we have the conceptual framework. Um, in the conceptual framework, there are two main phases. The adjustment phase, which is the bracket on the bottom to the left, and then the adaptation phase, which is the bracket at the bottom to the right. And they're separated by a crisis. Now, a family's adjustment and adaptations are outcomes from either good adjustment to crisis or poor adjustment to crisis. Good adjustment is known as bond adjustment, Bond means good, remember. And then 
poor adjustments at the other end of the spectrum, and that's mal, which means bad, maladjustment. So a crisis occurs when a family cannot meet the demands of a stress, and so the family becomes unbalanced and loses homeostasis. Adaptation, the phase to the right, is the family's attempt to restore balance, restore homeostasis to the family. Next slide, please. So now we have the adjustment phase, and I've taken the diagram down a little bit to show you just the adjustment phase here. So this is just the half to the left, all right? Uh, the the uh, first part of the, of the diagram. Adjustment includes the demands, resources required for change, and resistance to change. The arrows in this show the interrelationship between the variables. For example, a stressor, A, uh, is related to prior strains and current hardships. That leads to the strains, stressor, and hardships demands on the family. You'll see that those demands tap into existing resources, but also to awareness, definition and appraisal of the demands. The definition could be that the stress is good stress or bad stress. Good stress is also known as U stress, EU, which means good, and distress, DIS, means bad, so distress. And then the coping or adjustment strategies that the family has. At this point, they either adjust well on adjustment or adjust poorly, maladjustment. This adjustment phase is a relatively stable phase during which families undergo minor changes while resisting major changes to the family. So in the adjustment phase, they don't want to make major adjustments. Remember that a, a family uh, is in, you know, family system is in homeostasis and it resists change to the family. Something major needs to happen to make change happen. Things are fairly predictable. Members generally know what to expect from each other in the adjustment phase. Let's move on to the next slide, which will explore this a little bit more deeply. As we explore the adjustment phase, we need to think about the demands that are facing the family, things that are demanding their time and energy. Such things might include prior strains or unresolved stressors from the past. It could be hardships from the current stressor, um, you know, the hardship would be something like uh, they're having some financial difficulties that leads to not, not being able to repair the car, which leads to not being able to do the job, which could lead to further financial difficulties, right? And then the daily hassles, the minor daily disruptions of life that can continue to build on to these stressors that they're facing. Now, the three main sources of demands include individual family members, what are the needs of the children? What are the needs of the spouses? Um, the family unit as a whole, you know, the whole family may be experiencing some strain. And then of course, the community around them that's responding to this family and asking them to step up and do things uh, and to fix themselves. And so there's three sets of these, uh, three sources of these demands. Let's move on uh, to the next part of the adjustment phase, the B. As you remember from the ABCX model, the B is existing resources of the family. And there's three potential sources of capabilities in coping, uh, both resources and coping. Uh, so this is the family's ability to cope with the stress. Um, there's individual family members who may be able to step up and do something different to help the family cope. There's a family unit as a whole um, that may together do something to cope with the stress. And there's, of course, the community that may step up to help the family cope with the stress. So let's move on then and talk about resistance for a moment. Next slide. Resistance is normal. It's normal for any systems. Systems want to stay in a state of homeostasis or balance. And when a stress happens, it unbalances the family. And so the family resists making change. Now, there's three aspects of resistance. Number one, how aware is the family of the demand of their prior strains? How aware are they of the current stressor? And are they aware of the hardships and the daily hassles? So this is the family's awareness of what's going on. A second part of this is the definition and appraisal of the demands. 
like the C in the ABCX model, this may be positive stress. They may define it positively as, wow, this is an opportunity for growth and challenge. We're going to deal with this stress together. Or it may be distress. Oh, my God, another thing happening to us. I don't know how much more I can take. And then a third aspect of this is their adjustment coping strategies. And in this phase, because they're trying to stay in homeostasis, they may avoid dealing with it. They may try to eliminate the stress altogether, or they may in some way assimilate this into their, their daily thinking and their daily life. Now, the next slide is going to deal with uh, further with this re resistance, so let's move on. Families make meaning of stress. In other words, they define it as a family, and it's challenge to them, which again could be something positive, Okay, great, we can deal with this, or something negative. Oh my God, not another stress. How are we going to deal with this? Now, there are three levels to this meaning making. Level number one is situational. Each individual makes a primary appraisal of the stressor, so they kind of define it, and then a secondary appraisal, which is how can we deal with this? So that's at the situational level. Level two is at the level of family identity and global meaning. This is how the family views themselves as a unit, how they relate to each other, and how they relate to the larger community. If they're a highly insulated family, then they are gonna to try to deal with themselves. If they're a connected family, then they may um, wanna bring in outside resources to help them deal with it. The third level of meaning making is the family's world view. And this is the individual beliefs about the purpose of life and whether family, makers, family members agree on this purpose. So is this family, for example, a religious family, and therefore this is God's will, and maybe this is a trial to be overcome? <coughs> is the family, um, uh, are they, you know, is their world view atheistic or no religious uh, background and therefore they're seeing this as um, a crisis connected to kind of this the existential meaning of life you know what is what does life mean for us and how are we going to deal with this stress and then keep in mind that various members in the family may have different views if you've got adolescents in the family they're beginning to challenge the parents views and so if the parents are religious they may come with some outside perspectives that are non-religious and so the family has a worldview or a way of looking at things that helps them give meaning to this. So at each of these levels, situational family identity uh, meaning and then worldview meaning, they are giving a, a sense of structure to the stress or an understanding of the stress and how they make meaning of it, and how they define it, and whether it's catastrophic or whether it's something that we can deal with. And what may be catastrophic for one family member may not be for another. So one family member would think, oh my God, this is terrible. And another family member says, no, wait a second. We've dealt with something like this before. We can deal with this, right? And so the family then comes together to define this as a whole. Um, so an example would be uh, a teen having an accident in the car, which may be just like, catastrophic for them because the other person's yelling at them and they don't know what to do and they're calling dad and, or mom and, and family members are coming out to help them out and the other family members are like, well, we're going to get through this. It's okay. It's just, a, it's just a car accident. That's why we have insurance, right? And so the family comes together to make meaning of the crisis. Let's move on to the next slide where we talk about coping strategies. So adjustment coping strategies include Avoidance, which may mean just denying or ignoring the stressor completely and its demands on the family. It may mean elimination or changing, removing, or even altering the definition of the stressor. Or it could be assimilation, which means that the family reallocates resources and makes some minor changes in the family structure, not major changes, because remember they're resisting change, but they may make some minor changes in order to address the stressor. Um, so now we have one fewer car because of the car accident. So we're gonna have to figure out 
how to take Uber, how to take public transportation until the car gets fixed, right? And so there's some minor changes or the, the uh, a child may need to step up to, you know, father's um, in the hospital and the child may need to step up to take on some of his roles in the family. The mother is called away on military service, so he needs to temporarily step up. Uh, well, military service might be in a major adjustment. Let's think of a minor adjustment. The mother gets called away to a business meeting in another city, and so somebody else has to step up. The oldest child has to drive the younger child to, to school, right? So that would be a minor change in order to, to address the stress. Um, also, we need to think about in this adjustment phase, bond adjustment or maladjustment, which brings us to the next slide. So bond adjustment is when the family can adjust, move through this stress without major changes. That might mean a positive physical or mental health, um, you know, helping everybody cope well. It might mean making sure the family is functioning well or successfully navigating some life cycle task, like a child moving from um, into puberty and into adolescence or somebody leaving home because they're now an adult or uh, making some changes because the family uh, has a new child coming, right? And so there's some life cycle task that requires adjustment and they make it, they do it, they do it well. But maladjustment happens when there's avoidance, um, assimilation, or when assimilation cannot meet the demands. And so the family now has to make some structural changes to promote growth and those challenges are highly uh, those adjustments are highly challenging and so the family resists making those changes and so the family does not adjust well right and so that could lead then to the next phase or the crisis uh, phase so let's move on then to crisis so like we've seen so far when the outcome of the adjustment phase is maladjustment the family enters a stage of crisis. So this is really just the ABCX model with a few things added to it, right? There's an imbalance between the demands of the stressor and the capabilities of the family to address it. And so now the family's like a teeter-totter, they're out of balance. They may not have sufficient resources. They may not have the right coping strategies to meet the demands of the stressor. And so now they move into crisis. So then let's look at how the family begins to adapt, which brings us to the adaptation phase of the right side of the diagram. So let's move on. Next cut. slide, please. In the adaptation phase, we see two levels. Level one is accommodation level one. That's on the left-hand side of this diagram. And then on the right-hand side of this diagram, we see accommodation level two. Accommodation level one calls for the family to do some restructuring. Accommodation level two requires pretty deep consolidation of the family's needs. So we'll talk about those more in a second here. But let's remember that sometimes a family never does successfully adapt. And so they just move to a state of exhaustion and constant crisis. And we've all seen families like this, or maybe grew up in a family like that. So. Let's delve then into accommodation level one, which is the left-hand side of this diagram. Next slide. In accommodation level one, or the adaptation phase, of the adaptation phase, we see this double ABC uh, X model kind of reasserting itself. In accommodation level one, you've got double A plus double B equal, uh, plus restructuring. So let's look at this. Remember double A is pileup, and the pileup is of strains, stressors, and daily hassles. Now this is beginning to weigh on the family a little bit. The double B is the resources and the supports that the family can use to cope with the pileup. This leads the family then to a need for restructuring. Now, restructuring the family requires several things, four to be specific. There needs to be an awareness that the family structure as it currently is, is insufficient to meet the pileup demands of the, of the crisis and of the stressor. We need to remember that the family ideally would have some kind of shared definition of the situation, but sometimes shared definition is not always possible. Um, a crisis, let's imagine a crisis of a spouse having an affair, say the wife has an affair. 
And the wife may define the affair as, I screwed up. I'm sorry. It was just a temporary fling. It was something stupid. And the husband sees that as a blow to his ego and um, questions whether he wants to continue with this family or, or divorce the wife. So this would be a, a pretty significant um, stressor and crisis that requires some, some restructuring of how the family does things. This requires the family then three to search for some kind of agreement on how to solve the problem and then implementing that solution. And if they can't agree on the solution, then they're not going to be able to implement it. If they can agree, they still may not be able to implement it if the crisis is just too overwhelming to them or too problematic for them and taps their resources in a way that they're not ready to deal with. That leads to four, the adaptive coping of system maintenance. So system maintenance requires the family to integrate itself, to make sure that each member of the family feels good about themselves and about being part of this family. And then it requires that the family feel good about itself or have a high morale. If the family, if the, the uh, coping system or the maintenance system cannot address each of these issues, then they've got a problem, right? If family members can't agree on change or if they can't implement the change, they remain in a crisis state and thus cannot move to accommodation level two. Now accommodation level two is what we turn to next. So let's move on to the next slide. The adaptation phase, which is accommodation level two, is similar in some ways that A, double A, we have the pileup of the demands, the strains, the stressors, and the daily hassles, which may have been reduced as the family did some minor restructuring in accommodation level one. The double B, the resources and social supports, may also be different at this point, because now the family has restructured itself and can avail itself of new um, resources and new social supports, internal resources and external social supports that may be um, more advantageous to them and help them cope more. This is the stage that we, we think of as consolidation. Now, consolidation has five components that we need to, to kind of think of, and the, the fifth one we'll spend a little bit more time on in the next slide. But number one, the family has to have an awareness that they've made some, some changes to their structure and to their patterns of interacting. Two, that they have some shared life orientation, some shared meaning so that the family is working together defining this issue. Number three, they have to agree on the changes that need to be made. If they don't agree on those, then of course they won't make the changes and they'll stay in the previous phase. They then have to implement those changes and move on to some adaptive coping strategies, which we will turn to in the next slide. Adaptive coping strategies include synergizing, interfacing, compromising, and system maintenance. Now, synergizing is coordinating and pulling together the perceptions, the needs, and the resources, the definition of the problem, the needs of the family, and the resources, pulling those together. Interfacing is then relating to the community in a new way, through new rules and new transactions, uh, drawing upon community resources because of the fact that the family now has some deeper understanding of the problem and is willing to work together to solve it. There may need to be some compromise. The solutions will not be perfect, and will certainly not be perfect, perfect for every member of the family. And so there's going to have to be some give and take. And then the family is going to have to, and I'm sorry about the misspelling there, it shouldn't be family, but it should be family. Uh, the family needs to, um, to work on integrating themselves, taking care of each of the members, raising the members' esteem. You certainly don't want a consolidation that um, makes one person the scapegoat, the problem of the family, because that's one way to fix the family would be to scapegoat a member, but that doesn't um, lend itself well to better family functioning, because if one person is scapegoated, 
then the family's still not functioning at a high level. That's still maladjustment, right? And then the system's morale. If the people feel good about being part of this family, the family functions better. They don't have to feel great, just feel good, feel like they belong, feel like this is an important place for them. Feel like this, uh, yeah, think about if a, if a couple's in tension because of an affair, people don't feel good, the family's not working together well, and there's poor morale of the family. If they can resolve that and understand that it was a one-off thing and that I screwed up and I love you and I really committed to this marriage, then maybe the family can then reintegrate themselves, build up the member's esteem, and uh, build up morale. Another way, though, of dealing with a marriage crisis would be to, to have a problem-focused marriage that focuses on a child and scapegoats that child. And so a lot of times when children are brought to us for counseling, it's because the family members, the marriage team, is not doing well. And so they're focused on the child because they're not focused on each other and fixing the marriage. Well, that's not a solution to this problem. And it keeps them in the state of crisis. For example, I had an addict, a 30-year-old addict one time, who all his life had gone from crisis to crisis to crisis because of his deepening and worsening addiction. And each time he would have a crisis, the family would, the, the marriage would stop focusing on each other and would focus on him. Well, in some ways, he was the scapegoat, the glue that held the family together by creating crisis after crisis after crisis so the family could focus on him, scapegoat him, rather than the marriage focusing on each other and in improving. And his worry was that, or maybe unconscious, but his worry was that the family wouldn't survive without him, so he needed to create crisis after crisis. And every time he would clean up, his parents would start having problems, and he would then end up getting high again and going to jail. And so it was crisis after crisis. They never successfully were able to adapt and cope. So a family needs to address these these changes and consolidate them, or they're going to go back to the restructuring phase, or even worse, return to the crisis state. Now, this leads us to uh, a consideration of what happens when families keep trying and it doesn't succeed. That's exhaustion. So let's move to that next. Exhaustion happens when the family is unable, because they don't have the resources, or frankly, just chooses not to resolve the crisis through changing the family. If the family's resources are depleted and everybody's just completely exhausted, they just don't have the energy to do it anymore. And they're willing to quit and they tend to fall apart and fragment. Now, families can go directly from crisis to exhaustion, especially if there's been a lot of crises in the past. They're more likely to experience exhaustion, however, when their previous attempts at adaptation have not successfully worked, and then they just give up. If the family continues to work or is somehow renew that they go to family therapy and the social worker then begins to help them understand what's going on and they become reinvested and reinvigorated, they can once again begin the process of structural change, moving things around in the family so that they work better and then bringing in outside resources, community resources to help the family cope. And then they can re-enter the adaptation phase from the phase of exhaustion. So let's think then about the far right of this. So now we've moved through accommodation level one into accommodation level two. Um, so they've moved from restructuring to consolidation of those changes. So they've changed the family and then made long-term consolidative changes, and now they're gonna to move to maladaptation or bonadaptation, uh, which is the next slide. Notice that maladaptation, and I think my arrows are wrong here, uh, so switch these arrows, but maladaptation, which is the bottom, which should be the bottom arrow, uh, occurs when the family cannot balance their demands and capabilities, or does so at the expense of a family member, uh, and that family member deteriorates. Their health may be worse, or their mental health may uh, decrease, or they may fall into addiction, or they may begin, the kid may begin failing in school, and the family then is vulnerable to further crises. Bond adaptation, so imagine that bottom arrow pointing up to bond adaptation instead of maladaptation, 
Bond adaptation occurs when the family is able to promote physical and mental health, when the families are able to help their members develop and improve, when the roles are balanced in the family. And so it may be mom who was just, you know, working a, a job and going to school and then coming home and trying to take care of the house and trying to meet everybody's affection needs and she's just exhausted. So the, the other spouse or one of the children step up and take on some of those roles. And so now the family's able to function better or maybe they get an outside housekeeper to come in or something changes, right? When they are able to accomplish life cycle tasks like helping children become adolescents or helping adolescents leave home or uh, you know, adapting to new members through birth or adoption or somebody just kind of moving in or somebody moving back in, right? Those kind of life cycle changes. When they're able to maintain family integrity and then reestablish a sense that they're in control of this, that they got this, right? Then they're gonna experience bond adaptation, which is good adaptation. So now we've worked from left to right through this model, which is really the double ABCX model with a few more pieces. Let's move to the final slide and just kind of look at the whole thing all together and only make a few closing comments and then we will be done with this lecture and you can move on to the next pieces of module six. So the FAR model, the uh, family adaptation model, suggests that families go through cycles of adjustment, cycles of crisis, and cycles of adaptation, and those don't necessarily happen in a linear fashion through time. So in other words, families may reach a certain place and then go back because another crisis happens because the pileup gets worse. They may be revisit earlier levels until they successfully adapt or in this model, they may give up due to exhaustion and just kind of live in crisis. And we will see, as social workers, we will see families like that who've just given up because it's just too difficult and their resources have been tapped for too long. Now these phases in this model cover the pre-crisis and post-crisis periods, which addresses some of the limitations of earlier models. Uh, it's not just up to the crisis, but what happens after the crisis. So this model sheds light on what happens after the crisis by expanding on the double ABCX model into two phases, accommodation level one, which is restructuring in the family, and accommodation level two, if they're successful at level one, consolidating those changes so that they're more permanent and functional, and then again moving into either bond adaptation, where members are uh, connected to the family and they feel like they belong and the family is now kind of reconnected to the community and um, and so resources are flowing in right and frankly flowing out of the family back into the community or maladaptation where members don't feel like they fit they don't feel like they belong they feel like they're strangers in a hostile land and where the family is disconnected from the community and not availing itself of community resources. That would be maladaptation. So you see how the top arrow is time from left to right. The second arrow is, major arrow is social, cultural, situational, and developmental stressors. You've got the, to the left, the original ABCX model. Then to the right, you've got the double ABCX model with some added features of level one and level two. And then finally, adaptation and maladaptation, bond adaptation and maladaptation. So you can see how this model has more elements. It's getting more complicated and more difficult to deal with, but this element has more models to help us understand what families go through. And frankly, the most important feature of this model is the uh, level one and level two, that families have to restructure themselves. Um, and if they're gonna continue living in denial that these restructuring needs to happen, and continue to resist change, then they're gonna reach a point of exhaustion or just giving up. And once they restructure themselves, then they have to accommodate those, or consolidate those changes, which is accommodation level two. And they consolidate those changes and they come together and they begin to really work. Then they can begin to move to a higher level of functioning, higher morale, higher member esteem, uh, you know, members feeling good about themselves, and uh, the integration of 
um, them as a family and an integration with the community, right? So this model has a lot to be desired to help us understand how families go through stressful periods and adapt to crises. What I'm going to do then from here is give you some videos and a reading or two to help you understand um, this model a little bit better because I can't tell you everything in a way that makes sense to you. So maybe somebody else can help me. And then we will uh, move through those with the associated quizzes and go to the discussion board. So we're getting closer to uh, the midterm exam. Um, so you may really want to think about these things that we're doing and especially the quizzes that I've given you on the professor lecture, which you'll take next, right, immediately after watching this. Um, you'll have three tries and, um, and uh, you'll need to earn your highest score. Okay, so I hope you've done the reading because it's really better to read first and then listen to me as I expound on the reading rather than trying to do the reading afterwards. But the reading and this lecture should help you pass the quiz. All right, my friends, I will see you then in module seven. Feel free to call me or email them if you need to talk more. Take care. Bye-bye.